Marshall Pruitt at Le Mans with Garage 56. We are spending some amazing time with Brandon Thomas from NASCAR, VP of Vehicle Design, this next-gen cup car, which is the basis, the heart of this Garage 56 Camaro ZL1. He's taking us on a pretty amazing technical tour, explaining what's different about the car for Le Mans, what's the exact same as you would find at a cup round with this Camaro. So let's get into a couple of the specific topics he's talking to us about here, getting ready for the centenary event, the 24 hours of Le Mans with Garage 56. Heart of the Chevy Camaro ZL1, tucked away, right? Yeah, hidden, uh, hidden but, unfortunately. But, but that part of your team, the overall creation mindset with the next gen car of, hey, we want to, go way into the future with this. So this has a long runway in Cup. And so what do you do? The thing that comes natural to us, which is put that motor as low as possible, put it in the driver's lap as best you can. And yep. if you look at the installation here, uh, this heartbeat of America is indeed, the yep. heart's tucked way back there. Tell folks about the installation and how that too just lends itself to road racing. Okay, so when we, when we laid out next gen, we wanted to run a new style prop shaft from the front to the back. With moving the gearbox to the rear of the car in next gen, we needed basically a rigid prop shaft between the output shaft of the engine and the input shaft of the gearbox. So every next gen cup car and every G56 runs a carbon fiber prop shaft. So that requires you to locate the engine very reliably, very positively. So the engine slides on to the front of the center section the two studs uh, supporting the bell housing. And then a front main A-plate in the front clip here uh, to adjust, kind of trim the uh, engine positioning and engine angles and all those type things. Um, the engine itself, cast iron V8 R07. This is the cup motor. We talked a lot at the beginning of this project. There was a lot of things as we were going through this simulation sensitivity to road racing and Le Mans in general mass obviously being one of the biggest things we could reduce. Cast iron V8 block isn't the lightest thing you're going to put in there. But when that thing pounds down the straightaway, <laughs> everybody knows that it's a big American V8. What kind of power are we trying to make for 24 hours? Because it's not a question of potential power. This right. thing could make a million horsepower if desired. But again, sure. the whole goal is to last all 24. What kind of revs, what kind of peak power and torque were you you're aiming for here? So that was... That was a lot of conversations. That was a lot of arm wrestling. Uh, the folks at GM Powertrain, uh, Russell Blanus and his crew up in Pontiac, Michigan, the folks at HCD Engine Development, uh, that's the Hendrick and uh, RCR engine shops working together. They all jumped in. You know, obviously the race car guys, we wanted 900 horsepower, we yep. wanted 10,000 RPMs. And we wanted the thing to last forever and never have to be cooled. Uh, the engine guys wanted 500 horsepower and 5,000 revs and run around at 100 degrees Fahrenheit on the water temperature. Yeah. So we had to land somewhere in the middle of that, which is about where we did. Uh, and, and that took a lot of effort, right? I mean, this, this engine program uh, through both of those groups has, I think I heard the name, I think I heard the number well over 15,000 dyno miles. Wow. To do this, right? because you have to do all the endurance work on the dyno before you even do the endurance work on the racetrack. And this engine package has done endurance work at uh, Welcome North Carolina on their dyno for HCD. It's done endurance work at GM with the prop shaft and the gearbox installed. So all this stuff has been thoroughly developed and tuned and worked on to get us to this point. 